Hello, welcome back to the channel. I am finally back from my travel. So let's break down the next episode of The Last of Us. This is episode six entitled Kin. I've heard there's a bunch of medical stuff to check out. So let's break it down. As before, spoilers and a warning. There may be some pretty gory stuff here. Joel, are you okay? Joel? Shut up. Holy shit, are you dying? Okay, okay. okay. No, no, but are you? Because just so we see here, Joel has a bit of a funny turn, and I think there's two possible things that could be going on here. First thing we all think about chest pain is if it's coming from the heart. This probably isn't a heart attack, but that type of thing. So ischemic heart disease, or cardiovascular disease, or coronary artery disease. All of these mean the same thing, and it's the process of the narrowing of your coronary arteries, the blood supply to the heart. If this narrowing is stable, you get chest pain on exertion, i.e. when the heart muscle uses more oxygen than the blood supply can provide to it. If this is repeatable and resolves with rest, like we see here, this is called angina, and is possibly what's going on here. Although what goes against angina is that we've seen Joel do lots more physically demanding stuff without having chest pain. But having said that, angina can be worse with cold weather too. Although if this is new chest pain, you do need to do tests to make sure it isn't a heart attack, such as an ECG or a troponin blood test. The difference between a heart attack is there is a sudden significant blockage to the coronary artery, usually from a blood clot forming, and this causes death to the muscle of the heart. There are also lots of other causes of chest pain, but the other one I want to mention with Joel here is an anxiety disorder linked lightly to PTSD. We've seen the unbelievable physical and psychological strain he's been under. So it's also possible that him walking out of a place of relative safety to go back into the wild is giving him some kind of agoraphobia, causing him a stress response, which increases the heart rate, which can cause chest pain, breathlessness, dizziness. And don't forget too, we are multicellular organisms. So it's likely it could be a mixture of things such as anxiety, with some underlying ischemic heart disease too. <laughs> I tell you what, if you ever get stuck in a zombie apocalypse and you're packing your bag, make sure you put duct tape in there. It's got to be top of the list. Or failing that, make sure the person with you is that Phil Swift guy. Hi, Phil Swift here for Flex Tape. Can I have some? No. What, just to warm up? Come on. <laughs> so alcohol warming you up is kind of true, but not really. You may feel warmer after drinking alcohol, so-called having a beer jacket, but this is because alcohol dilates your blood vessels, so sends more blood flow to your extremities and this will increase the temperature on your skin, so make you feel a bit warmer, but actually it's doing that at the expense of dropping your core body temperature. So you might feel warmer, but your actual core body temperature is getting cooler. It'll work, right? The vaccine? It's a little late to start wondering. Okay, just throwing this out there, just because Ellie being immune to the fungus doesn't actually help us produce a vaccine. I've seen this kind of misconception in a few movies with diseases. If someone is immune, we can take their blood and extract their antibodies from their plasma and give it to someone who is infected. A kind of passive immunity, that's what we talked about in the last episode. But the person who's infected and receiving the antibodies isn't gonna then start being able to create the antibodies themselves. Although the idea may well be you give these life-saving antibodies from a donor to give that person long enough for their immune system to start producing the antibodies. But this is completely different from what happens with a vaccine where your own immune system is trained on an inert part of the pathogen. So finding someone who's immune will not help in this process of developing a vaccine. So the potential treatment of someone like Ellie existing is more of a therapeutic, as in to treat someone who already is infected. It's not gonna help produce a vaccine which is more of a prophylactic, more of a preventative. And I mean, you want both things, but really in this situation, you really want a vaccine. Tommy! Oh, 
<laughs> oh my god, I never thought he would actually find him. Is that the, uh, <laughs> the first bit of good news in this whole show? So we're seeing uh, another episode of this chest pain and it's happened in near identical circumstances as before, coming on with cold air and what looks like a central chest pain with difficulty breathing. So I think our thoughts of possibly angina or a panic attack or even both are still pretty accurate. Cool, I love that they've included this. So we have a menstrual cup, so a nice eco-friendly way of managing periods. I think it's really cool that a high concept TV show like this shows you're still gonna have periods in a zombie apocalypse. I saw a man kill his own brother to save her while I just watched. And today I thought that dog was gonna tear her apart because it smelled something on her. And all I did was stand there. I couldn't move. I couldn't think of anything to say. I just... I was so afraid. So Joel's spilling out the... everything that's happened to him and the huge strain <coughs> on his uh, mental health. This is actually a, probably a pretty good thing for him to do. Have a good talking therapy with someone that he knows and trusts. Realistically, Joel has done an unbelievably good job. He might say he was scared that the dog might attack Ellie, but he had a bunch of guns pointed at him. So it just highlights the impossible situation, seeing things that no one should have to deal with and then having no support. So he's an absolute sitting duck for PTSD. Lately there are these moments where the fear comes up out of nowhere and my heart feels like it stopped. So he talks about having this sensation that his feels like his heart stops, so it goes back to what we talked about earlier, so some of his chest pain may be linked in with anxiety. And this feeling like having your heart stopping it is an example of a palpitation, so the sensation of feeling like your heart's beating differently, and this sounds to me like he's having an ectopic heartbeat, so an extra heartbeat when he shouldn't be, and this often delays the next heartbeat, so it can give the sensation that your heart stopped. Ectopic heartbeats can be associated with stress, but aren't usually a sign of anything seriously wrong with the heart. As before, any new symptoms always worth being investigated, so in this instance, we'd probably give Joel a halter monitor, so an ECG that he wears around his neck for 24 hours to see if we can capture the heart doing any funny rhythms. Every night. What kind of dreams? I don't know. I can't remember. I just know that when I wake up, I've lost something. Oh man, poor chap. Obviously a fictional character, but it should be a reminder to us all that someone may look strong like they can handle everything, but be covering things up really well. Sounds to me like Joel has developed post-traumatic stress disorder and very common with this to have sleep issues in the form of nightmares or insomnia. And it's understandable. We've seen all the unrelenting craziness he's had to deal with and no real support for it. There are definitely doctors here. <laughs> What did Ellie see? Some uh, unreadable handwriting. We then see a list of medical supplies that they've packed and I do feel like it is a personal attack on us emergency doctors because all that's on it is fluids, morphine and acetaminophen or paracetamol. Do you think that's all us emergency doctors prescribe? The reason I'm offended is because <laughs> Uh, it's mostly true. Although there are quite a few notable omissions here, no antibiotics and they are desperately short of gear, like to give an IV you need to have a giving set, cannulas, none of that appears on the list. I'm guessing the equipment might be in the first aid kits given the fact they are marked as stocked. But yeah, I'm guessing there's massive shortage of supplies, so that's probably why they don't have certain drugs. <laughs> Go on, Joel, my son. Mm. I 
Okay, this is not good. That looks, is that a broken baseball bat? It looks like it's pretty long. That's probably gone pretty deep. We've seen similar injuries throughout the series and just like them, without medical help, you're relying on a lot of luck to survive. It's possible that it's just damaged the skin and abdominal wall, but given the size of the foreign body, you'd expect it's gone deeper into the abdominal cavity, so you'll be lucky if it's missed everything like rupturing your bowel, the blood vessels around the bowel, and the big blood vessels that are a bit deeper, such as the iliacs. In an ideal world, you'd want imaging such as an ultrasound or CT scan to see what that damage is, and ultimately, if there is internal bleeding or damage to the bowel, you need a surgeon, an anaesthetist, and a fully decked out theatre to be able to open and repair the damage or even remove the damaged bowel. Even if he is lucky with that initial injury missing all the bowel and blood vessel, he's still not out the woods yet as we saw from the medical supplies, they don't have any antibiotics on the list and that broken baseball bat doesn't look like the most sterile thing I've ever seen so he's at high risk of developing a wound infection or if we feel like this has gone deeper into the abdominal cavity, it can develop peritonitis, which you know can kill you in a couple of days. They're not following us. I think we're safe. Joel? Joel? Joel, no, 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 shit! This is a very bad sign. If someone passes out from a penetrating injury, you would have to assume they're going into hemorrhagic shock, so losing so much blood that they can't mount blood pressure to perfuse their organs, in this case his brain, so he loses consciousness. Worth noting with Joel, to try and maintain his blood pressure, his heart is gonna be working harder too, and given we suspect he may have some cardiovascular disease, would mean he's not gonna be able to maintain that blood pressure for much longer without risking going into cardiac arrest. This falling from a horse is potentially a very bad injury in itself, but putting that to one side, dropping to the ground will actually help him in two ways. Firstly, when someone passes out, keeping them on the floor is a very good idea as it means it's easier for blood to get to the brain. And secondly, keeping them in a stationary position and applying pressure to that area will encourage a clot to form. All of this motion on being on a horse <laughs> would not have been helping with that. I actually can't see a way out for Joel in this desperate position. I think his only hope is probably a passing ambulance. So there you have it, loads of stuff to break down in this episode and some good things he's reunited with his brother, some bad things he's currently at the side of a road with no form of communication looking like it's going into hemorrhagic shock. So you know this program really is sort of swings and roundabouts. As before if there's anything I've missed in this episode or any theories you've got in the show please leave a comment down below. I know I love reading them and loads of people in the community love reading them too. I've been away for a little bit, so really excited to finish this show because now all the episodes are out. So please consider subscribing if you want to see them. And I'm looking forward to doing some future videos too. So come on board and we can learn about some more medical science together. So it just leaves me to say thank you for all the support. I hope you're all well and I'll be back soon.